Hey guys, today we're going to be talking with Brian uh, about a couple different things. This is actually part one of a two or three part uh, video. In this first video, uh, Brian, by the way, is a uh, senior developer and now does YouTube uh, full time. Uh, specifically focusing on iOS development, uh, his channel is Let's Build That App, so I've been a, a fan of his for a while. He usually does like a stream a week as well, so you can see right now that uh, he's actually uh, streaming live as I'm recording this, talking about is iOS development real programming, and he's got 200 people watching, which is pretty good, so I'm, I'm pretty impressed by that. Um, and uh, typically building out apps, like right here, you're building out Twitter, uh, from scratch in, in iOS, but uh, we're going to be talking to him today in this in part one about um, the importance of side projects, uh, iOS development essentially, uh, obviously, and then we're also going to be talking about these hybrid apps such as React Native and his thoughts about that. Um, and in a future video, we're going to be talking about it's going to be a little bit more of a, a fun theory craft in part two, where we're going to uh, be talking about. Our thoughts about self-education and traditional education, uh, which is something that I, I kind of struggle with myself thinking about. So that, that was a really enjoyable talk for me. Make sure you check out his channel and subscribe and enjoy the video. Bye. All right, here we go. Um, so again, thank you for taking the time. I know we we're trying to schedule this and here we are finally. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me. Always uh, good to talk about development, coding, all that good stuff. Yeah. Now, I um, so I I started watching your channel because I I caught a, a live stream and I find that there's not like one one of the reasons I like live streaming is I get to kind of talk about software and unfortunately it's one of the things that's lacking at my work is like no one writes a single line of code out of work so I have to I have to go out there to meetups and stuff like that. Does it, does it have, like, is that anything that you enjoy? Like, is it just something that you kind of do to build the channel? Or do you actually like having these sort of philosophical conversations about code? Uh, that's a good question. Um, every now and then, it's good to take a break from coding is what I feel. And doing it all day, every day, it gets a little, you know, a little tedious after a while. And then you start to wonder, why, why are you doing this in the first place? Yeah, I, I, I see. Share those thoughts. I can I can understand that because uh, I know I I I have uh, not even a year of like professional experience under my belt, and you're a much more senior developer than I am. So maybe maybe I I will get to, to that point. But I I am just totally infatuated. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I I definitely still love to code. Like I can do it all day, and. You know, sometimes getting on live stream is is fun, right? It's just there's something about it that's just fun. So that's kind of why I do that. Nice. Now, are you doing YouTube full time? Because I, I I sent you a message on LinkedIn. I noticed that you don't have a current employer. Yeah, yeah. Um, so currently doing YouTube full time, trying to make the most out of it, and trying to figure out what I want to do with the channel at the same time. Uh, and as you know, it's a bit of work. That's what, it's a lot of work, right? Trying to trying to build something. And yeah, um, not really looking for anything else other than just building out the the platform right now. Nice. Yeah, it's it's an interesting process, and obviously your your channel is much larger than mine. But the the process of growing a something, you're still trying to meld what that something is, and you kind of have a picture. At least this is how it is for me. You have a picture of what you want it to be, but it's still kind of blurry. I don't, I don't know if it's the same for you. Uh, it's It definitely started out to be something else than it is right now, even though it's fairly close to what my vision was. Like I started about a year and a half ago. Um, and the vision has kind of, it's, it's remained, but some new additions have, have gone in there. And it's it's slowly but surely materializing into something that I I am trying to maintain for the next couple of years. So yeah. Nice. Now, what was something that kicked it off? Because I always feel like when people make you know it's a pretty drastic change when you go from essentially being an employee to your own boss and truly your own boss when you're starting something from the ground up. Was there was there something 
it was just that time or was there a, an event where you're like you know i want to try something different ah uh, yeah yeah <laughs> I, I get asked this question quite a bit and there's really no like you know super like surprising answers to this question basically i had this boss that i didn't want to work for anymore and i also had wanted to start something else that i could own and call my own and so i was working on this company for like two years as a ios developer and then you know the boss wanted me to start doing some rails work first i don't know why because i really i suck at rails so I didn't really like doing it, and I just quit my job and started doing YouTube instead. Awesome. I like that. <laughs> I like the let's make a decision, and I'm going to choose, kind of, not to break it down to one thing, but happiness. I want to be happy, and I don't want to do Rails, because I feel the same way about PHP, and I work in PHP, and I hate myself for it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Well, I kind of struggled with that decision for maybe half a year. I'll say half a year. And then I finally decided to, well, there were other events that led up to that final decision. But yeah, I just decided to quit and do my own thing. Now, what was um, what was kind of some of the ideas going through your head for that? Because that's, that's a very interesting thing. Because I, I mean, it's something I, I feel like I can relate to of sort of being... Like, hey, I'm going to try this new thing. And, you know, there's a little bit of maybe fear, maybe um, apprehension about doing it. Any, anything that you're like a little bit worried when, when you finally, you know, made that decision after six months? Um, any worries or concerns? Um, I don't know. I guess not, not so much on my side because I typically like doing things on my own that are kind of new and weird. <laughs> and like past 10 years, I've been doing that pretty much constantly. And so things really never kind of worked out in the past. Like they never gone past the first half a year to a year of, of that project's existence. And so this was just yet another one of these weird random projects that I wanted to start. So just I just did it. And then now it's been a year and a half. So I hope it's going to go on for a lot longer. But we'll we'll see what the... Uh, what the, the YouTube gods have in store for me. So yeah, who, who knows what YouTube gods have in store for any of us? <laughs> it's... <laughs> it's a strange platform and it changes every couple of months, maybe a couple of weeks. Yeah, and... it's, it's, uh, I, uh, I, so I, I'm very interested in like YouTube news. I don't know if you follow this or anything, but, um, recently there was a large court case with uh, a channel called H3, H3 Productions. And um, are you, so you're familiar with the case, and essentially it's a fair use case at the end of the day? Yeah, I think they won the case. Yeah, they, they recently won the case. And did you have a chance to watch the video the case was about? Uh, I haven't, but I think that video has like 4 million views already. Yes, and it's the most cringe-worthy video, and it, none of it makes any sense. This is, we're kind of getting off topic here, but it's a very strange thing that I watched the video, and at the end, they recommend you go to the guy's channel and subscribe. And I find, <laughs> I find it all very strange, the whole thing. But the, the important thing is uh, fair use. I don't think it's so much an issue on coding channels because a lot of time so you're creating your own original content and, and going from there. But uh, other channels, it's a, a bigger deal. Yeah, I, I do have fair use. Um concerns with my channel sometimes because the idea behind my channel is to build out something that's already in existence in the app store or the play store and sometimes i do worry about are, are these big companies going to come after me for i don't know writing an app that's very similar to theirs and showing it off i don't know that, i mean that is a that I, I mean i didn't really think about that but if you built essentially a clone of an app and then somebody followed a tutorial and then built a similar thing, added a couple more features, and all of a sudden it became their competitor. I could see how they would be pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a strange place to be and like, I'm going to sue you for writing open source code, I guess. So I'm not too worried about it, but it's it's a little bit of a concern every now and then. Yeah. Now, what, um, 
No, obviously, uh, you're, I'm, I'm sure YouTube is your your biggest sort of side project or project, if you will. Do you have anything else uh, outside of YouTube that you're working on? Uh, so the things that are outside of YouTube, well, there is the website that I build out, which I sell like premium courses off of. And that's kind of like the other thing that's at the same time, it's still very closely related to YouTube. Um, you're probably fully aware of the, <laughs> the business model where you have your marketing through YouTube and then you funnel that to your website. So that's basically it. And instead of me funneling it to something like Udemy or Teachable, or whatever, I just funnel it to my own uh, direct website. So it's a big project, and I'm um, trying to work on other things at the same time, like launching my own app, uh, pretty much building on my entire platform. So nice. Yeah, I'm always interested to see what people are are working on. I'm glad we kind of brought up. Like I, I know you had mentioned that there's been other projects that, for whatever reason, stalled or halted. Uh, cause I, I just got, I actually just got done doing a live stream and one, uh, one person was worried that they were sort of failing. And a lot of times people don't realize that you have to usually it takes a couple times and you kind of learn from your previous things, what makes good choices, what makes bad. Was there, was there anything in a, a previous project where kind of stood out of, okay, maybe this project's not going to work, but I learned something valuable from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a strange little thing that I've noticed with people where they consider things like failures or things that were not successful, you somehow label them as failures. But if you really think about it, everything that you do in life, you you do it for a reason and then you get something out of it. And those projects that were, you know, failures, you learned how to build out an entire platform, an entire system from that project. So I don't I never see those projects as failures for myself they're always just a stepping stone towards a bigger goal that i want to get to um so in the past i've built out these these projects where you know learn how to use the database learn how to put a website on the cloud learn how to store things learn how to use like amazon web services just learn all this stuff i mean it's eventually it comes in handy when you want to build your own website that actually works so those projects that never went anywhere like their all those skills they are in play now for my current website so yeah nice now uh i know you do more more than ios um i just wanted to kind of pick your brain about ios because i i i know nothing uh so <laughs> i'm the john snow of uh, ios development if you will so um one of the one of the things people hate about um web development and love at the same time is that there's you know JavaScript's changing every week it feels like and there's new tools or new frameworks and whatnot. How how is sort of the the world of iOS? Is it a similar path or is it pretty strict and kind of uh, you know steady updates but kind of slow and steady wins the race? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I also <laughs> I was just having this like comment. Uh, debate with a user on my channel you know how, how those go uh, so, <laughs> sometimes they get very heated right and you're like no you're right no you're you're wrong or whatever and so there's this guy that was bringing about bringing up this this topic of how i personally don't uh explain enough in my videos <clears throat> i was thinking about it some more and i feel like most of the code that we do in ios development doesn't actually like you probably don't need to understand like 90% of that code because it's so it's so boilerplate. But I feel like everything I do in iOS is just a copy of someone else that wrote it out before already. And I never really have to think about what I'm doing. Like this is just a code. You build out this list and you put things on the screen. Rarely do I ever say, huh, what's, what's really going on? I just feel like it's so, the, the coding is like very basic. And in terms of like comparing it to website building and JavaScript, I feel like JavaScript, you have to think a lot more in terms of like how the views are being rendered out because you have to deal with so many different sizes of browsers and styling and all this stuff. Whereas iOS is like, it's so straightforward. There's only like one way of doing it. Now, do you, do you happen to like that or do you happen to like a little bit more of, I don't want to use the word complex, but it's a little more moving parts. 
Um, I don't know. I think I've done iOS for so long it's gotten boring. And every time I touch the, the browser, there's so much flexibility in JavaScript. That's why I like doing JavaScript programming more these days. I just feel like iOS is just super strict and uh, not flexible at all. What are, you, what are your thoughts on um, now you have these, um, I think React Native is one sort of these hybrid um, JavaScript web applications that can compile, if I understand them correctly, I, I'm about to start React Native in like a month, but uh, compiled down into an iOS or Android app. What, what are kind of your thoughts about that? Um, so I think React, so I use React.js for my website. It's like a, it's like a really easy to use framework that turns your typical spaghetti code JavaScript into like componentized uh, little, I guess, uh, little libraries that you can reuse everywhere. And trying to work that style in a, in native, I guess, iOS and an Android application building, it seems like a really good idea. <laughs> I haven't exactly done it so much to say like it's a clear winner, but from every article that I've read about it, it feels like you can develop a lot faster because all you have to do is you change one line and you hit the refresh. It just makes your changes come up. And I I feel like everyone's ready to hop onto the train. Uh, I don't really care so much who goes where because <laughs> there's always going to be native developers and there's always going to be cross-platform developers. And even <clears throat> the strange thing is that even Facebook says that if you want to be a good React native developer, you have to be like a good iOS Swift native developer or a good Android native Java developer or Kotlin or whatever. And you have to have those basic prerequisite skills in order to like really know how to use React native. That's what they say. I, I can see how that makes sense because there is a a thought process of especially you know designing and and user interaction on on a mobile application where if you're not used to kind of thinking in that way regardless of what tool you're using uh you know the app may not be to its full um capabilities yeah yeah there's always those um those newest apis that come out every year and you have to wait for the react native team to like push out the new packages that make it compatible with JavaScript. Like, let's say a new uh, AR kit libraries, right? You're going to have to wait for the React Native team to push out new React Native libraries for that. Now, <coughs> if, <coughs> excuse me. Um, in terms of uh, iOS is in. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you happen to be looking for a boot camp, I couldn't recommend Dev Mountain any higher they also include housing with their tuition so you can get up and go and get started right away thanks again for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video bye